Hey y'all, welcome back to Poplar Creek Farm. Today I am going to succession sow some more seeds. So I've been succession, succession sowing, <laughs> it's a tongue twister, um, kind of throughout the season. I sowed beans initially and then I sowed more beans and now I'm sowing more beans. Um, and that is just allowing for a longer season that I will actually have the, the crop. Um, I'm growing a couple different varieties that I've grown, that I've, that I've sown before, um, but some of them are similar. So I had sowed provider green beans, um, and now I'm going to sow contender green beans. Um, these are, they're really, I mean, beans in general are a very quick harvest, uh, and that's why you can really succession sow these all the way, even in zone 5B, upstate New York, I can succession sow these until pretty much August. Um, and the reason I can do that is just because it's so, they, they just produce so fast. Um, so I am sowing these. They're normally, let's see, that's days to sprout. It doesn't say days to maturity, but normally it's pretty quick. I'm also sowing um, these purple teepee beans. I have a maroon bean that I'm growing now. I also have dragon tongue bush beans. Uh, I'm trying to just grow. One of the things that I really kind of want to be my portion of market gardening is some things that are a little bit different. I don't want to grow things that everybody else is growing. Green beans, does everybody else grow? Yeah, of course. But I really want to have some color. I want to have some things that maybe people wouldn't try normally on their own, but we'll try because, hey, it's something cool at the market. Um, so those are purple teepee. And then I'm also growing red swan bush beans. I got two packets of each because again, I can succession sow these. So even if I don't sow them all right now, as other things come out, I can start sowing. Uh, I have some cabbages behind me that are going to be coming out soon. This uh, rainbow chard is, it's more bitter at this point than it, than it is sweet. Um, this whole row will probably come out or at least half of this row will come out in the next few weeks because they're cabbages. Uh, I have half a row here. I've got a whole row behind me. I've got a small section. So I have areas that I can definitely sow still. Um, and so again, success, succession sewing. Apparently my mouth does not want to say that today. Uh, I also have two lettuces that I'm trying um, or greens in general, not lettuces necessarily. This is a lettuce, this is a green. Um, these are both heat tolerant ones. My lettuces that I had sewed before, I didn't have great germination. And so that's actually where I'm gonna just fill in with these. I'm not going to sew one of these rows. Um, I'm going to sew over there, but this is bronze beauty and it is absolutely gorgeous, but it's heat tolerant, slow to bolt. So it should be pretty well, or should do pretty well in this, in this type of a climate. Uh, these are greens. This is Chiju Misai. I have no idea. I'm saying that even close, right? It's a cross. It's a cross between a Tatsoi and a Kamutsuna. I don't know. Um, it's got the unami flavor, flavor, apparently. This is actually my free seed packet, the last time I ordered from Baker Creek, and I'm really excited to try it because it's heat tolerant. Okay. So first, I'm gonna just go through this row behind me and just weed it. Um, I'm gonna take my stirrup hoe and just kind of weed it out, and then I'm going to go ahead and plant these. Now, if you guys saw in my last video, I had commented the fact that I, because we're expanding our market gardening, I plan to uh, get a row seeder. Well, not even, I don't know, a couple hours after I posted it, m my dog is barking like crazy. And I'm like, what the heck? Why is she barking? Well, I, I look outside and my neighbor's pulling up. Um, and this, these are the neighbors that I, they've helped me, they've helped us uh, a ton. I actually just farm sat for them recently, which was super fun. And they, uh, he pulled up with a row seeder. <laughs> They do raised beds now. They used to do a lot of in-ground gardening, but they primarily do raised beds now. Um, and so they don't use the row seeder. They used it when their kids were home um, and they had to plant a lot more food, you know, to, to feed their family. And so they don't use it. So he said, I can have it and use it. And I'm super, super excited. I'm not gonna use it today only because the ground is somewhat wet and sticky still because it's been raining on and off. And he said it doesn't work super well. Plus, you know, when the, when the um, ground is wet. Plus I do need to clean it and everything, but, I can't wait to try it. I'm definitely going to try it this year because I want to make sure that I'm, I'll probably sow some beets and carrots with it, um, in the, you know, towards the end of summer and just to make sure that I'm really comfortable with it. So for when next year, when we're growing a lot that I I'm ready to use it. So again, the huge, huge, huge thank you to my neighbor. Um, they watched my videos. They found me on YouTube while my husband mentioned it. Oh. Oh. 
You see that big cabbage? I think we should pick that one. Yeah. I think that's going to be it. Yeah, it's starting to split. Wow. You can pick it right on the top. Pick the whole thing. You can kind of twist it and pop it out of the ground. We'll cut the end up. We'll cut the bottom off after. <laughs> Come on, muscles. <laughs> Yank it. <laughs> there you go. As you see, the cabbages are coming out and I've got a few more red cabbages and then I've got some smaller ones. So I will probably be able to sow this section very soon. But this right here, starting here, all the way down is the row I can sow. Obviously need to weed it. And then over here um, and then there as well. So let's get weeding. Real quick, I just wanna show you guys, I have a marigold and I love them. So what I'm going to do right here is, this is a, a pretty narrow row, but there's plenty of space on both sides for these beans to go. So I'm gonna do two rows next to each other of beans. Now this row is about close to 50 feet, 40 to 50 feet long. Um, so it's gonna be 40 to 50 feet of beans. I'm gonna do one kind of bean on this side and one kind on this side. I'm probably gonna do the contender and the purple TV. And then the rest of where I'm planting will be the red beans. Um, that should be enough to succession sow for now. And like I said, as I pull other things out, I'll pop some seeds in to those places. A couple reasons for that. It's not just so that I can have more crop, although that is the, obviously the main reason. It's also so that weeds don't pop up. The more you have your space filled, the less likely you're, you are to have weeds. Beans especially are really good at for succession sowing, not only because they're short, uh, you know, they're quick to produce, but also because they fix nitrogen. They add nitrogen to the soil. So where I'm pulling things out and I'm planting beans, I'm adding nitrogen right back into the soil. These are great for so many reasons. So that's part of the big reason I'm doing this is to really fertilize my soil because I want this garden next year to be absolutely incredible. I'm sowing beans all over my garden, not just in one spot. I am making sure that I have beans throughout the garden to help the plants right next to it. It's like the three sisters. Uh, you have the corn, you have the squash that binds up the corn, and then you have beans for fixing nitrogen. So let's get planting these beans. All the beans are planted. I'm just gonna quickly plant some lettuces. But let's talk a little bit about the why and how to succession sow. So obviously we talked a little bit about the why in the beginning to you know extend your harvest. It also can help with pests. So if you have pests that are getting a certain crop, now there's not, not every crop can be succession sowed unless you're in a very warm climate. I can't succession sow tomatoes. I can't succession sow um, my peppers. I can succession sow some potatoes um, to an extent. I can definitely succession sow beans, lettuces. Uh, I can't really su su I can't really succession sow most of my squashes. Cucumbers, yes. Zucchini, yes, because they're quicker producers. Um, but the big squashes, I can't. But it can help with pests. So if you're having pests that are affecting a one, one type of crop and you succession sow, maybe they wiped out your first crop, but by then they may be done with their life cycle. They may be kind of moved on by the time the next crop is, is kind of producing or, you know, germinating, growing. Beans, you can succession sow, I'm having a really hard time with that, uh, about every two weeks from, from the time of your last frost in the spring to um, 60 to 70-ish, depending on your variety of beans, uh, days before your first frost. Now, for me, it's definitely 70-ish days um, before I can, you know, by the time I need to stop sowing. 70 days before my first frost in the fall. Um, I probably will stop sowing these 
I've only got a few beans left. I've only got some left. So as I pull out these cabbages or something, that's where I'll sow them, but I won't do a whole big planting again. Because again, I have all these beans over here that are between the tomatoes. Then over there I have beans that I sowed later. And now I've got these ones here. So I have lots and lots and lots of beans succession sowed, which is really, really good. I am gonna succession sow some cucumbers as well. I've got some cucumbers coming um, to succession sow. And I'm probably gonna add some of those to these trellises that had some that didn't survive. On my Kajari melon trellis, only one side is planted, the other side completely died. Um, and on this trellis here, I've only got one cucumber plant. So as those things kind of finish up, um, I will sow. I'm also gonna be pulling out carrots pretty soon because they are starting to sprout. Uh, and it's better to get something than nothing. So I'm gonna probably pull those out, pull beets out. Um, and those will be spaces that I can fill with things like cucumbers, things like beans, things like lettuces. Greens, you can succession sow for so long because you can start early before the last frost even. Um, cold hardy varieties, you can start really early, especially under a row cover. And then I can grow them through uh, my last frost or my first frost in the fall. Uh, especially under row cover. I can grow them even longer and a lot of times are better that way. Kale is gonna be much better in the fall and the early spring than it is over summer. Uh, cabbages, same thing. A lot of the lettuces are the same way. Spinach, same way. Um, arugula, things like that go really well in the cool weather. So you can really succession sow those a lot longer. Certain crops obviously have a uh, limited time that you can succession sow them because of the fact that they have to have the heat. And in upstate New York, especially, we can only succession sow, you know, for a certain amount of time because we have earlier frosts. Um, my first frost is estimated for October 11th, but oftentimes it happens before that. Um, and our last frost in the spring is estimated for May 11th, but oftentimes we get them a week or two after that. So it's one of those things we, we definitely have to kind of tailor things to our area and you will too. So look up your first and last frost and then kind of figure out from there how many days before and after you have um, two succession sow. To me, succession sowing is so important because like right now, this whole row here would be completely empty. There would be nothing in it. And when I am gardening for market and I am growing, gardening to grow food for my family for an actual, to actually um, help replace some of our grocery budget, I need to utilize every space in my garden to its fullest. I cannot leave garden spaces empty for any for long periods of time. Um, there will be times where I'm gonna have empty areas, I'm sure. When my beans come out of here, when they're done in here, they will not get replaced with anything because that's where fall crops will go. My fall crops will probably go over in this area. Um, unless I have areas over here. It's, it's one of those things, it's kind of figuring out how you want to continue to plant things, especially being able to rotate. I don't want to put all my fall crops right here because this is where I put all my early spring crops. And those are the same crops that are going to be right here. And I don't want to put a lot of pest pressure on them, putting them in the exact same area and also nutrient pressure, because if they're in the exact same area, they've already depleted or taken a lot out of the soil, the nutrients that they need. So you're not going to have the nutrients that those plants need. Um, so that's why it's so important to succession sow and to rotate crops. It's, it's just one of those things that to me, I'm very, I'm very passionate about. I'm excited to do this. I'm excited to utilize my garden, every inch of it that I can. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Remember we're going today for a better tomorrow. Please like, and subscribe and join me on the next one.